Hey guys, it's Splash. Wanted to record a little bit of a quick introduction here. So this is cut from my one hour live stream. I did four parts. So there is an all pro prediction, a season prediction, an awards prediction, and five rookies I think could make the all pro team. So go ahead, check out the other parts. This is just one of the four parts. So have a nice day and drop a like on the video. So let's start offensively with the quarterback. And at the quarterback position, I have Josh Allen. He was a second team all pro two years ago, but he did have some statistical regression last year. His pass rating took a big hit. He had fewer passing yards, passing touchdowns, despite more games, more pass attempts. However, in the playoffs, Allen was simply phenomenal at a 149.0 pass rating. And I do think that will bleed into this season. And as you saw, I have the Bills with a relatively easy schedule that like their tough games are really spread out. I, I don't see them going on like a losing streak of, of sorts. Um, I do think Allen will be an all pro and we'll get into MVP pick in a little bit. At running back, I have Jonathan Taylor. Um, he kind of ran away with it after Derrick Henry went down. So he was just kind of on cruise control the second half of the year. Um, I think Indianapolis will have their moments of being good, but also being really bizarre, like say losing to Jacksonville potentially. Um, he was second in offensive player of the year voting last year, was the all-pro last year. Uh, led all players in scrimmage yards, scrimmage touchdowns, led the all running backs in attempts, yards and touchdowns. Um, he is uber efficient, 5.3 yards per carry through his first two seasons, and he has a great offensive line next to him. So I think Taylor is the best bet to be the all-pro at the running back position. Moving into the trio of wide receivers, I'm going to start with Jamar Chase uh, from Cincinnati. He had a rough start to last season, at least publicly, um, drops in the preseason, but then he just turned into a menace to society during the regular season. Over 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns, had a crazy playoff run with almost 400 yards, and he could have been the one catching the game when he touched out for the Super Bowl champion Cincinnati Bengals if Aaron Donald didn't exist. So there's that. Uh, Justin Jefferson coming in second here. Um, 1,600 yard season last year, has 17 touchdowns in two years. He's been a second teamer both of his first two seasons, but I think this year is the year that he breaks through. He should be in the Cooper Cup role in Kevin O'Connell's offense, and he might not win the Triple Crown, but I think he will be productive and a potential guy to lead the league in yards while Chase has like 25 touchdowns. Um, so exciting times. Uh, my third receiver spot is a flex spot. This is for Devontae Adams. He's been super productive, 2,900 yards, 29 touchdowns the last two seasons. He's been all pro the last two years. And he's moving into a new offense, a new scheme, but he has familiarity with the quarterback. And it's a very good room around him, which should help. So instead of being, you know, double covered because your second best receiver is Alan Lassard, now teams have to contend with Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller, and of course, Devontae Adams. At tight end, I think this is a lock. So it's Travis Kelsey from Kansas City. He has made the All-Pro team each of the last three even years, and he's made seven straight Pro Bowls. The future Hall of Famer is likely to go over 1,000 yards again, and he will be the first tight end, 32 or older, to do so. He's caught five touchdowns in each of the last five seasons, and while there is some competition with the likes of Mark Andrews, George Kittle, Kyle Pitts, I think Kelsey is the best bet. Jumping to the offensive line, starting from left to right, I have Trent Williams making a second consecutive appearance at left tackle. Um, a nine-time Pro Bowler should make his 10th this season. Um, the last two Pro Bowler or last two All Pros at the left tackle spot, David Bakhtiari and Ronnie Stanley, are both dealing with injuries, so they, I don't think, are going to be the stiffest of competition. Also, Tyron Smith is out for several months, so Williams could coast to this one. He had one of the best run blocking seasons, but that kind of overshadows how good he is as a pass protector. It doesn't allow many pressures. It doesn't allow many hits or sacks. So I think it will help out Trey Lance a lot and help out the 49ers be one of the best teams in the NFL once again. And to throw it out there, if he makes a 10th Pro Bowl, he will be the fifth tackle ever with 10 Pro Bowls. Anthony Munoz, Willie Rofe, Jonathan Ogden, each made 11, and Joe Thomas made 10. Speaking of Cleveland, Joe, Joel Batonio is my pick for left guard, all pro. 
He has made, he had made three consecutive second teams behind Quentin Nelson, but he finally broke through. Nelson didn't play quite as well and missed a little bit of time, but Betonio had a magical season. And I think the, the best part of his season was when he had to move out to left tackle for two games. He played against the Raiders and Packers. His left guard, Jedder Wills, was out. And Betonio was the best left guard in the NFL for some reason. So incredibly talented player, one of the top 10 or so players in the NFL. And I think he will make his second All-Pro team. Moving to center, we have another future All-Pro, future Hall of Famer. This is Jason Kelsey from Philadelphia. He's made four or five All-Pro teams, and he hasn't missed a game since 2014. When he starts Sunday, that'll be game number 123. Um, and even into his mid-30s, he's still one of the best centers in the league. He's an incredible move blocker. He helps the Eagles tremendously in the run game. And he's a you know, rock-solid pass protector as well. This year, it should be fun watching him and Cam Jurgens interact and letting Jurgens be the next Kelsey, like the heir to Kelsey's throne here. Uh, right guard, it's Zach Martin in eight seasons. He's seven Pro Bowls, five All-Pros. When he's healthy, he's a Pro Bowl caliber player. When he plays in 14 games, he's an All-Pro. So um, he, to me, is far and away the best right guard in the league, while Petonio and Quentin Nelson like battle back and forth. Martin is one of the best 20 to 25 players in the league, and he is probably the safest all-pro pick. And finally, on the offense, we have right tackle Lane Johnson, from also from Philadelphia. He hasn't played a full season since 2015, but has been an all-pro. He's made Pro Bowl several times. He was a second teamer last year. Um, the Eagles should have one of the best offensive lines in the league, and the continuity there helps. But he knows the guys he's playing with, other pieces, such as Ryan Ramchek, he's dealing with players on his team that he hasn't been maybe accustomed to. Tristan Wirfs is dealing with injuries and retirements and new pieces along his line. So I think Johnson will have the highest floor and will look the best, while the Eagles, Eagles as a whole, will look very good and <clears throat> could make a run in the division like I had in my in the um, schedule prediction part. So let's jump over to the defensive side of the ball. And starting with defense, we have the interior defensive line, and it begins and ends with one Aaron Donald. So Donald is the best player in the NFL, without a doubt, a three-time defensive player of the year, seven-time All-Pro now, seven consecutive, eight consecutive Pro Bowls, has been the number one in my top 100, I believe two of the last three years, maybe all three years. Um, just a superstar of a player, the best pass rusher in the NFL, a top tier run defender. He is as influential as any defensive player in the league. Beside him, I have Cam Hayward of the Pittsburgh Steelers, three time All Pro, has made five consecutive Pro Bowls. And even as he's getting into his mid 30s, I think he will be one of the more productive players in the league. He's a lock for 60 pressures, he's a lock to get eight to 10 sacks, and he is also one of the best run defenders in the NFL. And he's a big reason why Pittsburgh, to me, can win 10 games, even if their roster isn't as loaded as other teams or their quarterback situation is up in the air. Um, moving to the edges, my two edge picks are TJ Watt and Rashawn Gary. So TJ Watt last year tied the sack record with 22.5 sacks, led the NFL in tackles for loss, 67 pressures, six, I think of 67 pressures. Felt like he was always in the backfield, always making plays, um, he has had 13 sacks each of the last four seasons, which only uh, three players since 1980 have matched. That is Kevin Green, Bruce Smith, Reggie, Reggie White. So we have a special, special talent in Pittsburgh. What is also generally, sorry, let me open my drink. What is also a generally competent run defender and he drops into coverage occasionally, he does make plays. For my money, there's not a better pure playmaker in the NFL in terms of making splash plays and mixing it in with generally impactful plays. Aaron Donald might be better on a snap-to-snap -snap basis, a game-to-game -game basis, but Watt is as destructive as it comes. But one player I think will elevate to that level of destruction is Rashawn Gary. Last season, he was third in the NFL in pressures behind Max Crosby. He was a tough omission here, Aaron Donald. 
80 plus pressures, more than doubled his 2020 season, nearly doubled his sack total. He lives in the backfield and a defense that I project to be excellent, one of the best in the NFL. I think Gary will be the breakout star and jump from to me, a Pro Bowl caliber player last year, even though he didn't make the Pro Bowl, into being considered a top three edge and on that caliber of a Watt and a Garrett. I think he can be that number three spot. So dropping back to the linebacker core, I'm going to start with Fred Warner. So for my money, Fred Warner is the best linebacker in the NFL. He can do it all. He is an elite coverage player. He's a competent run defender, strong tackler, and when utilized as a blitzer, he can be effective. But the part of Warner's game that I love the most is his ability to erase running backs and tight ends in the passing game. A lot of linebackers play this, you know, try to cover, this is a the franchise guy uses, uses this analogy. They cover grass, not players. Warner in zone coverage has tremendous instincts and will just pick up players like seemingly out of nowhere and make plays, pass deflections, interceptions, you know, force the ball, like get a forced fumble, um, just an exceptional player, exceptional playmaker, and he has tremendous down-to-down -down consistency that other linebackers perhaps lack. And joining him in the middle of the defense is one Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa. If I were assembling a roster of NFL players that play like superheroes, JOK would be my second pick behind the guy that trains with knives on the defensive line. JOK is an exceptional athlete, and it is so fluid in his movements, and he just appears. He appears where the ball is in an instant. And it, there's no, to me, there's no rhyme or reason. He just happens. It's not a process. It's an instantaneous. He is at the football. He is tackling you. He is pressuring the quarterback. He is making play on a play on the ball. He is one of the ascending players in the league and to be one of the best 75 players, 80 players in the league right now, and I think he'll be even better when I look at this list in a couple months. Just a superstar in the making. Cannot believe he fell into the second round. Just an excellent player, and it's gonna has crazy instincts and crazy athleticism. This means in my flex role, I have Micah Parsons. So with Parsons, he has almost finessed the system. And it's to a certain point that when I was writing an article about Parsons earlier, I really try not to compare him to Shohei Otani. So I'm going to explain. So with Otani, what he does is be a great hitter and a great pitcher. So it's hard to measure the combined value, but you know he is one of the top five players in baseball. It doesn't matter if he is the best hitter in baseball, the best pitcher in baseball. He's not. But he does both at such a high level. He does two things that you really shouldn't be able to do simultaneously at a high level. Micah Parsons is the exact same thing as a linebacker. So as an edge defender, I don't think he's better than Watt or Garrett or Gary or the Bosa's or Crosby or these players of that caliber. As a pure linebacker, I don't think he's better than a Warner Oh, even a Wagner, David Davis, Darius Leonard, Shaquille Leonard, sorry, um, Roquan Smith. But he does linebacker duties and pass rush duties, edge rush duties at such a high combined level that I do think he's a top 11 defensive player in the league even if he's not necessarily a top three edge or a top three linebacker by themselves. But the combination of the two puts him in this list, puts him in my all-pro team, and will continue to put him in my all-pro team as long as he's doing this hybrid role. So if you're going strictly by where a player lines up, how a player, the positional designation, Parsons probably would not be an all-pro because I would take Gary over him as the second edge, and I would have taken a different linebacker as the third linebacker. Or just move the flex spot to the defensive back spot, which is what I usually do. But Parsons is such an outlier that I think I have to mention that. But as a football player, 
Parsons transcends the position and is one of the best in the league at it. It's very similar offensively to like what Debo Samuel did last season, that as a wide receiver only, maybe he's not an all pro. But when you factor the rushing production, then you can say, hey, he's an all pro, even if he's not the number three receiver in the league. Or Lamar Jackson, a couple of years ago, might not be the best passer in the NFL, but he is the best player at the quarterback position. So I think Parsons falls into that role that pass rusher, maybe not TJ Watt or Miles Garrett or Rashawn Gary, Max Crosby, Bosa, et cetera. Linebacker, maybe not as good as Fred Warner, but when you combine the two, he's one of the best players in the NFL. So moving to the secondary, to me, this is the hottest pick of the bunch. Eric Stokes, the Green Bay Packers. It's the first round pick last year. And when I think of corners and linebackers too, but mainly corners, there are two general types of corners. So there's the first super athletes that may not be in position, but they can get into position very quickly based on their athletic tools, whether that's their length, whether that's their speed. Look at Tariq Woolen in the draft. You're drafting guys, a lot of guys based on traits, based on high end speed, high end length, you know, hand size, wingspan, you know, shuttle drills, all these. You're drafting them based on numbers on the page. Then there's another kind of corner, the technician, someone that studies the game and they are never a step behind. They are always a step ahead. They know what route the receiver is running before the receiver is running the route. They often run the route for the receiver and they don't, they don't get beat coverage often from a mental standpoint. They can only, they only lose reps when it's a physical you know, jump ball scenario or you're defending Tyreek Hill, things like that. I do think that if there's a player that is not at that level yet, that will ascend to that level, it is Eric Stokes as a combination of the two. As an athlete, who's a first round caliber athlete, just the 4-3-1 speed, great shuttle drills, great like he looks like a stud corner. But then you look at the film and you break down the nuances of the film and you like just the body movements, the how sticky he is in coverage, the, the almost dog mentality when Stokes is on you, that you're not catching the pass, that he is going to make the play. And it's, I don't want to compare it to Jalen Ramsey, but Jalen Ramsey is the second pick, my second cornerback pick here. But I think Stokes will be an ascending player. And I do think he's going to get all pro consideration because he combines the stickiness of a technically sound corner, but at the same time, he is an uber athlete and will win at the catch point and will get some interception, will get some ball production, I think have a dominant season. Then we move to Jalen Ramsey, who is the prototype for this hybrid style of corner. He's going to hit in the run game, but as a in coverage, in his zone, there's no one better. There's no one better at making the quarterback look like an idiot, whether Ramsey is breaking passes or intercepting passes or just plain making the offense stupid by throwing the ball that way. Ramsey is the king of the that in the modern NFL. It is a Ramsey island in a lot of ways, and he will get beat from time to time. But the athletic profile is elite. The he is technically sound, and he has that dog mentality, that extra 1% that some corners lack. So at the safety position, I have Antoine Winfield from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Javon Holland from the Miami Dolphins. With Winfield in 2020, he had a great run defense season. He was a really good, really uh, consistent tackler. Could be used as a blitzer in that attacking defense, which was a lot of fun to watch. But then last year, he evolved his game and was one of the best coverage players in the NFL. He had uh, a pass rating allowed in the 60s. He didn't allow a touchdown. And I know the the play you're thinking of is probably getting beat by Cooper Cup in the, a the NFC divisional round. That's not really his job, but sure thing. Uh, I think Winfield will combine his 2020 performance and his 2021 performance and be the, the best of both worlds, similar to what I mentioned with Stokes and Ramsey. Then we get to Javon Holland, who to me last year played at an all-pro level. He was on the level of a buyer. He was on the level of a Winfield. 
Um, I, if he wasn't my third all pro defensive back, I think he was my, would have been on my second team, but a stud, a playmaker, someone that can just be a menace, someone that can actively screw your game plan up just playing free safety. So after week four, when Holland settled into a primary role as the free safety of Miami's defense, first off, Miami got really good. After he settled in, they rattled off a bunch of wins. He was awesome down the stretch. And the quintessential game was against my Ravens. They get six pressures, was sensational moving forward, but unbelievable, unparalleled almost moving backwards. I think he's a top 80 player in the league. And I think this year will be the first of many all pro nods and pro bowl nods. And specialists uh, will go Jordan, uh, Jordan Tucker, Justin Tucker, uh, because Justin Tucker, uh, Jordan Stout, because punters are weird to predict. Um, return specialists uh, will go with um, Marcus Jones from New England as well as, uh, yeah, we'll just go Marcus Jones. I don't know if he does both kicks and punts for New England. Um, also, we do have a comment from Jack. He says Aaron Donald trains with knives. That is correct. So I'll do a quick rundown. Uh, offensively, Josh Allen at quarterback. And Josh Allen at quarterback, Jonathan Taylor at running back. Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson wide receiver. Travis Kelsey, tight end. Devontae Adams at flex, Trent Williams left tackle, Joel Petonio left guard, Jason Kelsey center, Zach Martin right guard, Lane Johnson right tackle, Aaron Donald and Cam Hayward interior defensive line, TJ Watt and Rashawn Gary at edge, uh, Fred Warner and Jeremiah Rusu Cuomo at linebacker, Micah Parsons in the Micah Parsons role, Eric Stokes and Jalen Ramsey at corner, Antoine Winfield, Javon Holland at safety, Justin Tucker, Jordan Stout as the kicker or kick and kicker and punter, and Marcus Jones as the wonderful return specialist. I don't have a line. I don't have a long snapper prediction, and I don't have a uh, specialist like uh, Matthew Slater role prediction. So, my apologies there. Thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you had a wonderful time. Uh, drop a like, drop a sub, and have a wonderful football season. And remember, chop on, go Braves.